Hello, this is CBeast Games, and we're here to talk about the top 10 best games of the last two decades. At number 16, we have Burnout Revenge. This game was released on September 13th, 2005 for Xbox, PlayStation 2, and Xbox 360. Burnout Revenge is a great game, but it's so low on the list because I've only played it once at a friend's house. Do not get me wrong, it's a great game, but it's not just, it's just not my cup of tea. Oh my gosh, this game is beautiful. Force Horizon 4 was released on September 28, 2016 for Xbox One and Microsoft Windows. This is a great open world racing game with a lot of things to do and amazing graphics. I don't play this game very often, but when I do, I have lots of fun. Yeah, it's one of the best games of 2018 in my opinion. Besides you know, a few other releases, it was a great game. And it had a lot of things to do. And it was definitely better than some of the other games I've played. 2018, Next up is Super Smash Bros. Melee, released on November 21st, 2001. I've never played this game. Well, you might think, oh, why is he putting it on this list he's ne if he's not played it? Well, the an my answer is, this is my list, so screw off. This ga these games, I have. this game I've heard is great and one of the most loved Smash Brothers games of the last two decades. After Smash Brothers on the N64, it was definitely an upgrade from what I've seen. And Smash Brothers is just a really fun series to play. I think the only one I've played is Brawl. It's a really fun series to play with friends, and it's definitely more of a multiplayer focused game, and it's just a really great game to play with your friends if you're looking for a, friend, a game to play with your friends. At number 13, we have Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Yeah, I've never played this game. Mario Kart 8, 8 Deluxe was a launch title for the Nintendo Switch and was a great game. After the original Mario Kart, Mario Kart 8 being a success, Deluxe was a great re-release. I have not much to say about the game because I've only played it once. I played it once at a friend's house, and it was a fun game from what I saw. Especially after kind of the flop of the Wii U, I don't think a lot of people definitely experienced the game, but I don't think as much as people would have as did with Deluxe because it was on the Switch, and it's just a great game in general. I've never played on a Switch before, so some of these, some of the other games on this list, I've never played before, so it might sound odd that um, I'm using them. So. Call of Duty Black Ops 2 was released on November 12th, 2012 for almost all of the 7th generation consoles and later on the Wii U in the 8th generation. This game is an amazing and one of my most played games on this list. The campaign was amazing and does a cool thing in the campaign where different choices you make make the different outcomes you get. You can get an ultra crappy ending, which is like, like lots of people dying, blood and stuff, well, obviously it's Call of Duty. The multiplayer is old now. I just not to. It's still good, but you're likely gonna get a hacked lobby, which is so. It sucks for a great game. Yeah, it sucks for a great game like this. You know, and you don't. You kind of want to play this game natural, but the best way I'd say to play this game is to play with your friends and just have a great time playing with your friends. And that's what you're gonna be able to get. You can play online with your friends. You can play split screen, whatever. You know, it's a great game. Next up on the list is Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2019. This game released on October 25th, 2019, and is the best Call of Duty in a long time. Ever since, you know, Ghosts comes out, Call of Duty has, like, had a weird in-between. Black Ops 3, I think, was okay, but World War II, Infinite Warfare, Advanced Warfare, all those games were not the best. They were just like, you know, you're taking... You're just re-releasing the same thing every year, and a lot of people got tired of it. And Black Ops 4, you know, was launched pretty crappy, didn't have a campaign, had a battle royale. It's just, you know, but black. But the thing is, with this game, Activision, 
is also one of those game companies that'll, you know, can't release a game, that doesn't have a ton of problems at launch. The campaign is great and all, you know, great campaign, but the Spec Ops mode and multiplayer mode were a mess in the beginning. Not so much multiplayer, just campaign, well, not the campaign, but Spec Ops was broken, you could, you could get into matches, but you couldn't do well because it was so difficult. Luckily, I got the game after the update came out that fixed all that kind of stuff. The problems with the games a lot lately, though, is they have terrible launches and they just get infused with microtransaction. Luckily, Modern Warfare had a good microtransaction system. Well, it didn't even have microtransactions. It just, you could buy COD points to buy the battle pass and skins and stuff, and they just flooded in. You know, and it was kind of a surprise because. I got the game right before the up Christmas update or whatever it was, the winter update, the big update. And then and then I the game updated and it did a weird thing where it like we thought it said it was fully updated so we uninstalled we stopped the update because it was just like is it updating? It's probably pointless updating. It uninstalled the whole game. Stopping the updates uninstalled the whole game. Which pisses me off because our internet is slow and we don't have the best internet so it took five hours to reinstall modern warfare when originally it took one hour and it's kind of just like activision you know you can do just you can do all these things but just kind of make it more convenient especially with the xbox one it's, you know interface not being so good you can make it more convenient you know but that's kind of the main problem i have with Modern Warfare 2019. It's still a really good game, you know, definitely a must play for, for the Xbox One, PS4, and State. No, do not play it on the Stadium. <laughs> yeah. Now we're on with Dark Souls 3. Yeah, I don't have really anything to say about this game. I've never played it, but I've heard th good things about it. So I'm just gonna put in a clip of the game yes. for like 30 seconds. You know, because I really don't know what it is. You can't, you know, I don't even own the game, so yeah. Like the transitory lands of the modes of Cinder can verge. Inventory North. Pilgrims discover the truth of the old world. Next we have Halo Reach, a game I actually know. So Halo Reach, great game. Great reception when it launched. Stellar campaign, great customization. Forge was great and had so much to do. There were a few problems with the game, but I played the game so late in its life that not even, it was past its lifetime. It really didn't have multiplayer. So I, I didn't notice a lot of the problems other people had with it. So, but Forge, on the other hand, was great. Playing Forge on Reach is what got me into gaming in general. I, my parents had just gotten divorced and I came to live, I came to see my dad during the summer. And my parents, um, my stepbrother announced, you know, introduced me to Reach. Well, he was not a big Halo fan, but he just had Reach and he won. And then I played a little bit, then went back to my mom's house, came back, it's been, it's been like two years. I've seen, I came back, played the game over years, finally. And I played it, I played it to a point where I was just like, I love, I like this game. This is the game that like I mostly played with my sister and my stepbrother. And then I moved to my dad's house. And this year, well, in 2018, in December. And I kind of just, I was kind of like, I, you know, went to school, I had to go back, go to a new school, and kind of the, the Halo Reach and those kind of games helped me, like, like, have, like, something to do, like, especially I had no friends or anything, so it's kind of, like, nice to have some kind of thing to do, you know, and have, like, 
something to be able to help shut my mind off from all the things that are happening at school. And it was a great, it's a great game. I'd suggest playing it. You'll have so much fun. Next we have Alien Isolation. I did never play this game. I mean, because I it was old when I got into gaming or whatever. Or I don't even know when the game came out. Personally, I did not look it up for this video. But I've started to consider playing it lately because my friends actually told me how good of a game it was. And now that it's on Xbox Game Pass, I'm definitely putting it in my back of my head to see if it's a game I'll like and enjoy. Because I heard Colonial Marines was not good, and a lot of the Alien games were not the best, but I heard this one's pretty good, so I might give it a try. All right, next we have Assassin's Creed Origins. After Assassin's Creed being an oversaturated moneymaker made by Ubisoft, to take a break. they took a break by making a movie in 2016. Yeah, that was a pile of... Donkey crap. And then, so, in 2017, they released Assassin's Creed Origins. It's a great return to form and led the path to 2018's Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Odyssey is not so well received, but Origins is really well received from what I've heard. And it's a, I recently picked up the Steelbook version of it at GameStop for $14, which is surprise. It's sad to see a good game like this so cheap nowadays. It should, in my opinion, be more, not more, too more expensive, but just worth a lot more. Not, you know, at least worth $30 because it's a great game and I got the Steelbook for $14, like a limited edition thing for $14, so, you know, it's kind of sad, but it's not really sad, but, you know, it's kind of a thing where it's like a game that's really good, but, you know, people don't really remember it much, even though it came out two years ago. Yeah. No, three. It came out three. It's 2020. That's right. Yeah, next is Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. Never played it, so here's a trailer. Yeah, because I never played it, so yeah, you know, just, just watch it. Your hunger may beget a fine shinobi. I expect it no less from you, my boy.
Metroid Prime is a great game. I never played it, but I've heard a lot of good things about it because it was the introduction to Metroid in first person. I think a lot of people liked that. At the beginning, it was not well received. Like, not at launch, but before that, people weren't so good with the idea of Metroid being in first person. But if I was a been a Metroid fan back then, I probably would have been along with the Metroid fans because Metroid was never in kind of like first person. Yeah, the reason I never played the game is because I was like, I'm like only like 14 years old. <laughs> so, and this game came out like I was a baby when this game came out. I probably wasn't even alive when the game came out. So, yeah, it just sounds like a great game to me. I might cons I have a Wii, so I might consider picking it up. Now we have another game I didn't play very much. Or at all, actually. Red Dead Redemption 2. Yeah, I've actually never played this game, but I'm considering to pick it up. But I've heard it has like a very slow start to the game. And but I've heard it's a great game and probably definitely a must play. And so I'm considering picking it up eventually. Not right now. Because I really don't have any money because I'm a child. But you know. Eventually I'll pick it up. Maybe if it ever comes to Game Pass, or if it's just like, or if it becomes like a, you know, a bit cheaper, because it's pretty new, so, um, definitely I am considering playing it, and definitely if you have it, or know someone who's have it, definitely ask, or, you know, play it. Alright, we're getting to the top three here, and... We're going for number three. We're gonna go with Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. Never played it. Yeah, I know. I consider myself a fan of Nintendo, but I've never played Smash Brothers Ultimate because I do not own a Switch. Yeah, I only own a Wii, and I used to own a 3DS, but I like Ultimate in a way that you know I don't have to play it, but I just like it because I've seen videos of it and everything and people playing it, it just looks so fun. And the fact that they added a Microsoft character, Banjo and Kazooie, into the game is so awesome. I love Banjo Kazooie, it's so awesome. At number two here, we have Halo Combat Evolved. Oh my goodness, this game is pure like butter on a stick. This is by far the best Xbox exclusive. And you know, later the later games have not been the best. 4 and 5 and Master Chief Collection were not the best. 5 and the Master Chief Collection have definitely shaped up since their launch. And but Halo CE launching made the Master Chief a gaming icon and like, you know, one of the biggest game characters ever. The Xbox became a juggernaut and is now one of like the face of gaming like most people will be like when they see an xbox or like when they talk about gaming they'll, they'll just like say xbox because it's so popular you know even if microsoft loses money on it most of the time it's still such a great console and a great game halo is just you know one of the best games i've ever played All right, at number one here, we have Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Okay, first thing to get clear, I've never played this game, but I fell in love with it. You might be wondering, can you do that? You know, how do you not play a game and fall in love with it? Well, it's called YouTube. You ever heard of it? You know, you're probably going to be watching this YouTube video on YouTube. Oh, wait, you are. Because it's the YouTube video. Well, the art style is so cool, and... And I could see this game getting so many people into Zelda for the first time, getting the first playthrough of an entire Zelda game and just, you know, having, you know, a lot of fun, you know, you don't, from what I've heard, you don't have to play like any of the other Zelda games before this to understand it, but it's just a great return to form. I've seen videos of both the original Zelda and the Breath of the Wild game. I know they're totally two different games, but 
they Breath of the Wild, it seems like, has taken every, like, art style and things from original, like, Zelda to, like, you know, the latest ones besides Breath of the Wild. It just seems like they've taken all the art styles and put it together. And I hope they come out with a sequel to the Breath of the Wild. Now, we have some honorable mentions. Thank you for watching guys, I'd appreciate it if you subscribed and left a comment below if you liked the video and tell me if you want more videos like this, I really don't post, I've lost some motivation to post until lately so please tell me if you like this kind of style and I'll see you guys, I'll see you guys either next, next week or in a couple days.